Uh, excited to talk to you today about Ivantis. Um, we were founded in 2007 by two top coronary stent inventors who are looking to apply their fluid dynamics expertise to a new clinical challenge. We're developing a micro stent that dilates and scaffolds Schlem's canal, which is the natural outflow path of the eye. We've got 27 folks in the company. We've raised uh, $107 million to date, including $71 million in a Series B round we finished last year, and we've treated over 2,000 patients uh, globally with 21, uh, in 21 countries with 75 surgeons. And I am uh, proud to announce that we just completed recruitment in our U.S. pivotal trial. So this is our implant. What you see here is the proximal end of the device that resides in the anterior chamber where aqueous enters the device. You can see three windows that face the trabecular meshwork. Uh, the device is crescent-shaped to allow smooth trackability through Schlem's canal. Uh, this is the outside of the device that faces the collector, so it's wide open so as not to obstruct or disrupt the collector channels. And when it's in place, it creates a cross-sectional stent that increases the cross-sectional diameter of Schlem's canal by about four to five times. We like to refer to it as an outflow multiplier. This is a surgical video. You see our delivery injector advanced to the point of the trabecular meshwork, and you're seeing the stent going into Schlem's canal now. Uh, we advise the surgeons to look for the three windows as the device exits the delivery system and enters the canal. Uh, one of the things the surgeons love about the technology is that they're able to see what they've done to Schlem's canal. And you're looking here at the entire nasal quadrant of Schlem's canal, fully dilated and stented. Next slide, please. So we're passionate about basic science at Ivantis. I promise I won't uh, get into this slide in too much detail, but uh, we've done a lot of work, a lot of investment to characterize the technology uh, and the mechanism of action. Um, one of the uh, images that's particularly interesting is the one in the lower left here, which is a fluorescein dye study. Uh, the researchers injected uh, microspheres of dye into cadaver eyes and assessed the intensity of dye in the outflow system. And as you can see from this image here, the vast majority of dye found its way to the area the device uh, in the uh, experiment. But uh, the proof is in the pudding with regard to clinical results. So uh, we've got four large randomized trials going on. This is the Hydrus 2 study, which we've reported on recently. Uh, it's uh, Hydrus plus FACO versus FACO alone in mild moderate glaucoma. This was just accepted into the Blue Journal, and it was voted one of the top 10 papers at the most recent American Glaucoma Society. The intent of this trial for us initially was, uh, as a startup company, to get an early read on what our U.S. trial would show. So this protocol was very similar to our U.S. protocol in that we uh, washed out patients or took medications away before surgery and then followed the patients, took medications away at one year and two years to get an unadulterated uh, pressure reading. This was performed at seven top European centers, 100 eyes, one-to-one -one randomization. And because this is about patients, I want to emphasize the average patients coming in had a pressure of 19 on two medications. Their washout pressure before surgery was 26 and a half. So prior to medications being taken away, we follow these patients to two years. And you can see here at the top, the Hydrus FACO group was 73% medication free at two years versus FACO alone, which was only 38%. You can see those lines are separating over time. We were quite excited about this result. Uh, in essence, a way that the surgeons could explain this to their patients is three out of four hydrus patients were med-free versus only one in three of FACO alone, which was uh, an exciting result. Then we took the medications away and we do an analysis of the percentage of patients who have a 20% drop from washed out baseline pre-surgery to follow up. And this is actually the primary endpoint of our U.S. pivotal trial, although I repeat this is not our U.S. pivotal trial, it's just a very similar design. What you see here is that at 12 months, the hydrus was 88% successful, while FACO alone actually did pretty well at 74%. But then we go out to 24 months, and what we see is that the hydrus remained strong at 80%, while FACO waned and dropped to 46%, so a 34% treatment effect at two years, uh, which was substantial. And I think what's most exciting to any of us who've worked in medical devices for a long time is anytime you see an increasing treatment effect over time relative to the control group. And I can tell you, we now have 50% follow-up on this study at three years, and we are seeing further separation, and we'll have full details uh, toward the end of this year on that. So in summary, uh, we have a strong preclinical foundation through extensive basic science testing, heavy emphasis on level one clinical results, 
Uh, we demonstrated an increasing effect over time relative to the control group in a level one clinical trial. We do have global clinical experience. Of the 2,000 cases we've done, as Chris mentioned, uh, the pseudophagic phagic opportunity is a big one. And internationally, that's been over half our cases. And we are well-funded and now pursuing U.S. FDA approval. Thank you.